Elections, elections, elections. Everyone's having elections. Let's see if people actually accept them this go around, shall we? You're listening to Lo-Fi Poli Sci. Welcome. Don't adjust your dial. Lo-Fi Poli Sci coming at you. It's summertime. Michael Pickering here talking about our famous question. What's going on in the world today? And let's kick it off with the world of international drug smuggling, shall we? A Brazilian ship was nabbed by Spanish authorities off the coast of West Africa, near Western Sahara and Morocco, carrying 1.5 tons of cocaine. Now, why is the Spanish police arresting people in boats for drugs out off the coast of West Africa and the Atlantic Ocean? Question mark. Colonization, you knew it, you knew it, because all this is happening out in the Canary Islands, which are still a Spanish colonial territory that should be part of Morocco or Western Sahara, depending on your beliefs. But it's Spain's today, and they confiscated Brazilian cocaine, and so the world turns, globalization continues, colonization continues, drug trade continues. And the summer's just getting started. Eyes open, people. Next up to Turkey we go, where presidential elections took place yesterday on Sunday, today for me. But their resident president dictator, Erdogan, was running for re-election to keep himself in power for 20 more years, because he's been there 20 already. And as of Sunday evening, it looks like it's headed to a runoff, which took place or is going to take place in about two weeks. But Erdogan is right under 50% right now. And the main opposition challenger, right under 45%. Very, very close. But you need 50% plus one to win in Turkey outright in the first round. So it's super, super close. And if there's some midnight votes, quotation marks, finger quotes around all that, midnight votes that come in during the night, Erdogan may claim victory. But... We'll have to wait and see. We'll know for sure later this week and keep you updated. Now, in more election news, off to Thailand, where parliamentary elections also took place yesterday, a.k.a. Sunday today for me, and prime ministership is up for grabs. And we're waiting to see if the Thai people can get rid of a government led by a former military commander, a.k.a. coup leader, a.k.a. dictator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things are complex in Thailand. But survey says, with almost all the votes in, Opposition gets the win. Oh, yeah. But, 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 wait for it. It's a joint session of Congress that chooses the prime minister. You see, it's complex in Thailand. Even though the opposition wins, it's not that easy. You know, you have a parliamentary system, but there are two houses of parliament with power. And the Senate is not elected. It was appointed by the military during the military rule and afterward, meaning they are likely to support the outgoing prime minister who was part of the former military and the coup leader. And even though he didn't win at all in these parliamentary elections, came in about fifth place, he still could end up leading again. Now what matters is how many of the opposition parties can join together to create a large enough coalition to fend off the military party. And that Well, that takes place this summer. So one point scored for democracy in Thailand. But the fight for freedom continues. And is far from over. We'll let you know more when we do, lo-fi listeners. Now let's head on out to Chile, where, just last month, a new law was passed. A reparations law for victims of femicide. Meaning the children of women who are murdered and the murder is classified as a femicide, which in Chilean law is defined as a woman who is killed by her partner or former partner. But the surviving children in Chile will now receive the equivalent of 200 U.S. dollars a month until they turn 18. You know, it's a tragedy that we need such things. But it's a wonderful thing for Chile to do. Now, let's hope that this summer, this new constitutional delegation that is rewriting the Chilean constitution that just got elected last week, let's see some new steps to stop femicide. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day, some not so heavy headlines for you. You see, here in the States, we are quite removed from much of the world. Two massive oceans on either side of us, one massive country to the north, a second massive country to the south, and that's it. And because of that separation from the rest of the world, we miss a lot. Like Eurovision. 
Now, many of you out there may have heard of Eurovision before, but do you really, really know what it is? Let me school you for a second. It's a song competition between countries that started as a technical experiment in doing a simultaneous transnational live broadcast for European countries. And it all centered around broadcasting this song competition. And it's hosted by the European Broadcasting Union. And the first one was in 1954. And there were seven countries. Netherlands, Switzerland, Belgium, Germany, France, Luxembourg, and Italy. And in 1954, countries didn't really know what was what with TV. So this really was an experiment. But now there are 37 countries. Albania, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Czechia, Cyprus, Denmark, Germany, Estonia, Finland, France, Georgia, Greece, United Kingdom, Ireland, Iceland, Israel, Italy, Croatia, Latvia, Lithuania, Malta, Moldova, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, Portugal, Romania, San Marino, Sweden, Switzerland, Serbia, Slovenia, Spain, Ukraine. And every country gets a song. And then it's all decided by voting via, now, the Eurovision app. Download the app on your phone, vote for the country that you want, or call-ins as well. But it's for the people who are in participating countries. And just this past week, at the 67th contest for the Eurovision 2023 Grand Finals, Sweden takes the win. Check out some of the entries on YouTube, people. Eurovision is always so fun, and they have some of the most interesting and innovative singing and dancing performances out there. I love it, I love it. And I really kind of wish we had something like this out in the States or in the Americas all together, and oh, it'd be so nice, so nice. Here's to dreaming on this lovely Monday morning. And that's a brief snapshot of what's going on in the world today. Don't forget to check us out on last week's blog, lofipolysign.com, and connect us on Instagram, people, for all your local lofi summer updates. And always remember that lofi poly is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Talk to you tomorrow, lofi listeners. Pickering, signing off.